Good morning everyone, welcome back to my channel. So how exciting, today is the first day of summer. So spring is finished, this piece is done. I did pin on the bottom here a bee that I was playing with right at the beginning of this project and it was then pinned to the uh, fabric container that I had all my bits in. So I've repinned him on the piece. I'm not sure if he will find a home anywhere, but I thought, well, maybe he'll just hang around for the project. So he's sitting there. So I'm going to pop spring to one side and let's have a look at summer. So I don't know if you remember this piece. This is the one I chose way back. It is a modern fabric that I picked up in New Zealand at a um, fabric store. Um, and it has these beautiful watercolour flowers on them. And I just, oh, I just love it. I've got a big piece of it and I don't know, I could see it as a bag. I just, I just love it. I'm not into a lot of bright colours, but um, this one caught my eye. I don't mind watercolours on fabric, watercolour flowers on fabrics and birds and things like that. So this one should be really nice to stitch into. Okay, let's just pop that to one side. I've put together a color palette. I was a bit unsure if I had enough brights, but looks like I do. In the yellows, I've got a lot that would be great to use the last of them, and then they're done. So I've picked a lot of these up in op stores and thrift stores. And I don't know, some of them might break and be too old to use, but I thought we're gonna sort through them. I've uh, had a look at each flower and just sort of built a little colour palette to suit the flower. Uh, the green kept it as fresh as I could, but I did put a little bit of moodiness in there, those sorts of tones. A little bit of Steph Francis. These I've been hoarding and, yeah, I need to use them. So I thought, oh, that might give us a little bit of texture. Some neutrals, of course, some pinks. I've been hoarding this Sue Spargo sparkle thread. A couple threads here that I've been using for some time. Yeah, just a little selection. <clears throat> a couple old girls, they might, you know, get a test and get thrown out if they're no good, if they they feel a little crispy. And then into the purples there bit of everything like I said some more old girls that let's you know see if we can use them if not bin them and some Sue Spargo yumminess there that might give us something so that's my color palette and I've upgraded to this container because I can see I can see everything so that's going to be my my um, diving in port of call so let's pop that to one side and let's have a good look at our piece. <clears throat> now, a critter. We've already got two critters on there, but we're going to go a little bit further and put this big guy on there. Now, he's a snow scene from a snow scene, so we, we need to merge him in. But then so was this little guy. So there's a few little things you can do to you know, build in. A bird that doesn't quite match and a lot of it is um, seed stitch or stitching right into the perimeter of the bird so that you just can't see the previous fabric then you can have a good look at your bird and decide whether he needs to be adjusted and I I would say once we cut him out he will be fine he will sit in amongst this beautifully the other thing we need to work out is where our words are going to go <clears throat> when I glance at this I sort of feel like we're going to sacrifice this little bird I feel like my bird could go here I think he will fit in beautifully there we'll cut him out in a moment my words I think feel like they could go there I do know what my words are because when I wrote this I actually fell into summer really easily I think it's because I had all of those thoughts and feelings in my mind at the time when I was trying to work out what my poem would be. So summer worked out really, really well. Now the other thing I need to do is check sizing. So 
Ah, okay. We can use this entire width. That's great because I've decided I don't like that. I was umming and ahhing about it and I don't like it. It's, it's gone. So what I might do, let's prep ourselves up a little bit. <clears throat> let's get the start of the invisible stitch down. We'll just do the perimeter because I don't want to bore you too much. Really looking forward to this piece. It's so different, which is great because I sort of want them all to feel very different. Like we've just changed seasons. It's like a calendar. You flick over the page and you're like looking at a brand new picture. So it's going to be interesting to see how this evolves. Pepper and Bandit looking through the window at me. They're enjoying a beautiful summer's day. It's rained last night, so the mud is, you know, thick on the ground. So Pepper and Bandit have just walked the perimeter of the property. They've had their breakfast and they're <laughs> checking out the mud. Yay. That's all I can say. It was so hot yesterday. The humidity. Oh my goodness. And then we had this huge storm front come through. And when I looked at um, BOM, that's our Bureau of Meteorology, um, the storm front went as high as Rockhampton, which is halfway up, well, nearly halfway up the Queensland coastline all the way down to Sydney. It was huge. And then we've got like a weather chaser here in Australia. Higgins is the name of the um, family. Or it might even be his first name. I'm not 100% sure actually. Well, he has, um, he often chases the storms and gives us live reports in of, you know, how they're coming. And storm season is well and truly upon us. And it sounds like he's bought a property down just east of the Southern Downs. So around the Leslie, um, Leslie Dam. And he had filmed this amazing storm front coming in. We don't get tornadoes here over land, but we have been getting very large storm cells that, I don't know, they're starting to throw the T word around. Never used to hear much of it, but boy. And the one that he filmed coming in towards where he was living and would um, sort of pop up at the Gold Coast, the scenic rim over that range and into the Gold Coast. Wow, it was a tornado. You could see the thing spinning. It didn't have a point of which that it hit the ground because it was just building and then behind the spinning was this big raindrop. Not big raindrop, big thing of rain. You know, they. Uh, I'm a bit of a weather weather geek. It, um, you could see where, let's say that was the, the shelf cloud, the, the big point of which it could drop if it did. You could see this side, it was sucking the air in. You could actually see the circular motion. And then out the back here is the rain that it's sort of dumping behind as it sort of spins and the energy in that thing and the lightning. And then he's filming that and Dad said he turned his camera slightly to an angle. There was another one building there that was coming this direction. This one was going straight for him. And then there was another one south, which was on its own course. So these two collided into just rain. But he was just in the right spot. If he's bought a property down there now, he used to be on the Sunshine Coast hinterland, sort of overlooking um, the Sunshine Coast up in the mountain range. So the way he was talking, he has sold that property, I think, and is down south, down closer to the New South Wales border. So he'll be seeing the big storms roll in from the downs. 
which oh, sounds like he's got an amazing spot. A bit scary. His wife was down there filming with him and she hopped in the vehicle and she went back to the house and um, the wife's father was on site as well and he's a keen photographer and he had cameras all set up filming it all. Um, one triggers, it, it, it takes a photo the moment it senses um, a bolt of lightning. So you could hear it just going click, 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 click. It was amazing. I never knew that that could be done. And then the other camera was on slow motion. So it was literally filming the whole time as this monster of a thing built. So the footage would have been just incredible. So yeah, he was filming live. I like it when he does that because it's like I've just jumped in the car and I've driven down there and I'm standing beside him watching it all, but I haven't. So I'm nice and safe <laughs> on my couch because you've got to be a bit brave to go storm chasing. For those of you in America, it's a bit of a thing, I believe. Well, we've all watched the movie Twister. <laughs> that the cows fly through the air. <laughs> well, they can do if it's bad enough. But um, yeah, the industry was really emphasised when that movie came out. So we've got a little band of storm chasers in Australia that do do it. And they've got fantastic... This chap has got a fantastic weather advisory site now, a membership if you want to really get into it, or just free information. And oh my goodness, we've had some flood, epic flood events. And that man single-handedly saved towns. When authorities weren't onto it, that guy was reading all of the stats coming in from all the water levels everywhere and he was putting calls through to authorities saying such and such town is in big trouble. Absolutely amazing. Really, really good work. Community work. And he's now starting to make a few coins out of it. I'm not sure what his background is. Um, obviously, he must have studied, studied weather. So I'm just not sure how he came to be, you know, doing it as much as he is. But yeah, it's good when private citizens do something like that. You can't always rely on the authorities because, you know, it's a big country. And they've got their hands full and there's only so many staff. So all eyes on it, I say. I'm just going to, sh I've just done a perimeter. Just for the sake of securing it, I'm just going to do a diagonal through. So I've got on the back of this piece of fabric felt, but it's a, a nice wool felt that I picked up at Spotlight. It's by the meter. It's soft and dense. It's just better than that craft felt that you buy often in squares, which has got a lot of glue in it, very synthetic. This would be beautiful within a, a quilt. I presume that's what they probably sell it for more so than the likes of me doing this but it just gives you peace substance I really really like it I've pretty much tried all of the different backings that you can use and depending on what you're making of course but if you're doing dense embroidery painting with thread like something like this you need the thick stuff if you're just doing some embroidery like Jennifer does on her channel, just, you know, just gorgeous open embroidery with ribbons, you definitely need stabilising, but you could go a little bit less dense than this. And there's quite a few different products out there. There we go. So it doesn't take long to get it down. And what have we got, three months to finish the piece? That one worked out really well, like it came together in the time frame. This one, I'm not sure if how we'll go. Hopefully we'll get it finished. 
I'm sure we'll get it finished. If anything, it might finish a little early, but we'll see. Sit and stitch. All right, where are we going to go? We're going to go back on that diagonal. If we can get rid of that pin. <clears throat> I love how there's some of these turquoisey colors down here. See that color where my thumb is? That is nice. And that would not have been a color that I would have thought of to put with this. So I love it when the artist before me has made it easy. I'm actually thinking about doing a lot of seed stitch in this. I was watching Susanna's video. She's on her last video for spring and she has done a lot of seed stitch through her piece and it, oh, I haven't done any seed stitch for a little while and if you break it down into small little areas and I'm, my stitch is very very small I'm actually tempted to seed stitch the back the main reason is see these fronds here see those they're going to be very hard to lay fabric into. I'll be able to get a little bit of fabric into some of them, especially these ones close and these. But these ones in the background that are ever so pale, I would love to have those stitched in. I don't want to lose them by putting in a big patch of fabric like I did with these. You know, I had patches of fabrics, but my background on this was very plain. Where this, my background, has got this delicate wash through it. So I'm wondering if I can capture that by stitching in those fronds and then seed stitching in, in amongst them. Gosh, talk about give yourself hours of work. But that's okay. I can do the seed stitches homework and then the flowers and the fronds and the birds and all the other bits and bobs I can do with you guys. So it'll all come together. Okay. Now we can trim. I'm just going to grab my dressmaking scissors. I'm going to trim that edge now. Oh, will I? Yeah, I will. We're going to have a straight edge there. I hesitated because I thought maybe I'd run a piece of lace or something down there, but I don't think so because I want to stitch him in and I don't want to lose him. Now, this side, that side I'm going to leave, but I will, let's just check our measurements. Oops, we'll deal with the beads too, oh, not the beads, the buttons. So that's just over 25. Yeah, I thought it looked crooked, like obviously it's crooked, but just wanted to double check before I go chopping. Okay. Could lose a little bit, a little bit smidgen more. Okay, now, the next thing we need to work out, we'll get to the bird in the middle, in, in a minute, is the fastening of the two together. And remember, we're going to have a connection point between them. I want to be able to add on, add on. So this edge will be where the buttons go. Now we can either, because I had some loops off of a, a um, pillar slip, so we can either put the buttons on the piece 
or we add in a piece that actually has the buttons on it. But what could we use? Hmm. I think I need to have a think about it and have a rummage because if I was to bring that down a little bit and have a connecting fabric, that'll give me a top edge decoratively speaking. And then I can pop my buttons on that and that's where it'd join in. Mm. Okay, little buttons, you are going somewhere safe until we're ready to come up with something there. <clears throat> then I wouldn't lose, see I'd have a button right in the middle of this orange flower. That's why I'm sort of tending towards, we add in an edge there. Something will come to me, we've got time. It gives me time to sort of have a, a think and a hunt around. Now the next thing I want to do is let's get our little bird fussy cut out. Now <clears throat> we're going to seed stitch up to it. I'm just wondering do I cut him out? Or do I give us a little edge? Hmm. See, if I seed stitch, you will see the blue. See, I'm sorry, I've gone all quiet, I'm thinking. <clears throat> if I'm going to seed stitch the background and not have that dense embroidery like here, see how it came, where's the camera? See how it came up to the little bird everywhere, the, the outside? So it covered that fabric. I'm not going to have that. So I think my little bird is going to be fussy cut out right to his edge. We are going to <clears throat> eliminate all of that fabric. I want him to sort of seamlessly blend. And it sounds to me the way I'm thinking this through that the background's going to be a little bit different. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm very carefully cutting him out. I might even get the writing done fairly early in the piece. Purely because I know what it's going to be. So that's an element that I can slide in fairly quickly. Oh, this is beautifully painted, this bird. Like I like playing with watercolours, but this is beautiful. Don't ask me the designer, guys. This is just a piece I've got in my hand here and I don't think I have the details. Maybe go back to the bottom of the video and I may have written it in the description so I might, might actually know more than I recall because the little bird in the last piece is from the same fabric. <clears throat> oh yeah. Thing is we can see him so that might change things do we bring him up there oh yes let's pop him there so it looks like he's sitting on a branch there then I can keep my little guy oh <laughs> yes 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 actually what I'm going to do to help stabilize the sides of this fabric because I have cut it out. I'm getting my art glitter glue and I'm going to get some paper and something out of the bin and I'm going to put a very small 
edge around of glue and that will just stop any fraying just in case there's a lack of stitches there I don't want him to get any furrier I'm now putting it where the words were going to go so we're going to have to rethink that but that's okay <clears throat> Bear with me as I just get this glue on. Isn't there's nothing like starting a project? I had this project sitting in Brisbane, so I've had to wait literally till the 12th hour to get my hands back on it to film this for you today. But I will take it with me now. It'll be part of my traveling kit. So I can play with it wherever I am, little bird, little blue bird. Blue jay? Is it a blue jay? He's not an Aussie. So if you're out there and you recognise this little guy, let me know. I'm going to say he's a blue jay, but I don't know <coughs> my birds. I am losing... that but that's okay that's okay and i can stitch that rose in real close to him and it'll tuck in behind him so that's okay with me as well and i get to keep the little ones oh. <clears throat> i love it now I am going to, well, firstly put my glue back on. Excuse me, guys. <coughs> mm. I'm just going to run some little stitches through the body as well. Just to hold, hold, hold that in position I'll put it in the white bits <clears throat> oh goodness sakes I'm going to need to go looking for blues look at that I've missed the the blue jays colors they're real vibrant blues too hmm I've got to keep this vibrant. I can't be dulling this down. I think I've already said that once. I really need to capture the essence of spring here if it's a dowdy colour. But look, there's a dowdy colour in there. Look at that green. But it's these, it's these ultramarine blues. <clears throat> Goodness me. Excuse me. <coughs> That's what really makes this piece pop. It's these purples, like they're bright. <clears throat> oh, for goodness sakes, guys. <laughs> I feel like I'm getting a bit of a head cold. I've just got that achy forehead. The neck feels stiff and achy. But the glands are slightly up, but not. And it's been like that for a few days. No, actually, I've said that probably three days ago. I'd say I'm nearly pushing a week. So I must have something in me that my body is fighting off. It just hasn't come to fruition. I've been going to bed a bit earlier too. I just feel jiggered. It's probably the last couple months coming home to roost, you know. There we go. I'll have to get into my box of bright colored trims and ribbons and see what I can find. Look, maybe even come down here. Maybe I can, you know, come across the top and down. I don't know. I don't know. All right, how exciting. 
All right, let's let's begin. Let's delve into these beautiful, beautiful colours. What are we going to do first? Should we play with the Sue Spargo sparkly thread? Yeah, let's just do it. Open it up. How do you get it open? Is that a sign? Dazzle, it's called. Can't open it. Better not use it then, hey? Oh, I bought this when I was in New Zealand. It was the first time I saw all the Sue Spargo threads and I was very impressed. Oh, aren't you pretty? There's a couple more in there too, these guys. Let's see. Let's have a play. I got an appropriate needle. Good size eye. Could probably even bring a little bit of ribbon work into this. That'd be fun. All right, let's have a play with this pink flower. It's about deciding where we want this to go. And away we go. The adventure starts. I think we'll just do long and short stitch. We might do a split stitch to make it blend. So a little guy, long guy. And then whenever I go back through the fabric, I'll split the stitch. Which I don't know if that's a good idea with this sparkle thread, but anyway, I might just scoot. I'm working on this tiny little petal here. A little tiny little petal. I'm going to map it out first. So I'm going to scoot along and lay my threads down across so I know my perimeters. And then, so there's even yellow in this flower. See, when you stop to smell the roses, you start to see colours that you don't see at first. And I've just spotted the yellow. That's interesting. Makes sense because the pink and the yellow go well together when you mix them on a colour palette. So now I'm coming back along sliding the stitches down into the previous oh that's gorgeous just a little shimmery petal so northern hemisphere you will be starting on winter Must be odd watching a season that you are definitely not in. You'll be looking out your window going, that girl has got bright blue skies and sunshiny days. Whoops. Hold the phone. We've got a knot. So early in the piece too. It's a bit twisty, this thread. Maybe I need to cut smaller lengths because it's wanting to twizzle around. That's my first finding. Now, I bet that's... Oh, no, it is my last stitch. Oh, see, it's twisting. Yeah, I think this needs to be cut in half the length that I just did because it's, like, got a bounce in it. Beautiful, but okay. Now, where are we going to go with it? Might do this big guy up here. I'll slide right in next to our bird. Put my first stitch there. I can hear Pepper barking at something. 
probably goose and his bandit get so excited once they have their breakfast and they start bouncing around there we go I'll just use the last of this thread I know it's boring viewing but I know you're all sitting there stitching It's very twisty. Definitely smaller. I wonder if I've got some pink ribbon that I could bring a little bit of that into it. Capture some of these colors. And then I guess the question is, see where the watercolor doesn't cover the background? of the pink that's an opportunity for seed stitch to come in that's where i think seed stitch is going to be the way to go on this particular piece of fabric otherwise i'd be completely changing the fabric to a, a different look and that's not what attracted me to this piece it was the loose the looseness of it so it's going to be definitely different which is great Oh, this thread's really twisting. This little bit of sparkle is just gorgeous. I could hardly sleep last night I was thinking about this piece. So for me, it's still Thursday. For you, Friday. First day of summer. And last night, I stayed up a little bit later to wait for the Roxy Journal of Stitchery Girls to find out what the prompt was, which was weaving. So when I finish filming this first video, I'll be going to, on to Honey Bear's Dress to film your Saturday video, which is weaving. And I, as soon as I heard the prompt, I'm like, yep, yep, no worries, thread or fabric or whatever. <clears throat> And then I woke back up about four o'clock and I was as wide awake. So straight away, the whole weaving things popped into my brain. I'm thinking, it's just too early. Why are you, why are you doing this? So I thought, well, I'll, I'll just flick through social media and just lay here for another hour and maybe I'll doze off, but I didn't. And I felt tired, my legs were aching. And I'm like, you really need another hour or so of sleep. So I ended up putting the phone down and actually getting that sleep, which was great. But, um, oh, goodness sakes, I tell you, sometimes I just wish I could turn the brain off. And it's always around that um, new, what have we got here? This is one of those scrappy little bits. Okay. Let's give it a bit of a massage. It feels a bit stiff, like it's been washed. It smells okay, doesn't have a smell. I think I would have got it from Melanie Purveyor of Textiles. Oh, what's happened there? Has that just broken down? Yeah, it's disintegrating. Look at that, yeah. And it's gone furry. The moment I've started massaging it through my fingers, it started to fur up. Yeah, I think it's had its day. I can see that it would not take, yeah, see, look at that. It's just breaking down. All right, enough, girl. Chuck it. Gone. No good. Have I got another dark burgundy? Yeah, I do. Let's have a look at this guy. This is a pearl cotton. So yeah, I had a bit of a rough night's sleep. I got enough in the end, I did doze off. It's those Roxy girls, they're ruining my sleep. And then they announce the 12 days of Christmas and a project that kicks off. So that's a bit exciting. 
Don't know if I'll have time for it, but oh my goodness. Talk about fear of missing out. <laughs> oh dear, we'll see. If I can get a few videos made for the odd days, I'm going to use that in that real dark area down there. I'll, I'll do this petal here. So we'll just map it out first to make sure we we like it. So just scoot along with the thread. Oh yeah. I don't know what this 12 days of Christmas is about. It's very exciting. I'm wondering if it's to do with the song, you know, Partridge in a Pear Tree. Or it's just a little stitchery per day with a little prompt. They do talk about Christmas decorations, so me intrigued we will know soon enough girl see it's another night of not much sleep because those Roxy girls have a an announcement and then Sarah's doing her video over the weekend because she's busy with work she's away so that's a third night of no sleep for goodness sakes Now I'm just working back through that zone, split stitching as I go, a little bit of satin stitch happening here. See that little edge of yellow there? I'm going to leave that and I'm going to stitch that in just to put that little highlight there. That's going to work beautifully. See, even that's a slightly different looking flower to this one. It's quite dark and moody. It actually looks like the bird is throwing a shadow down on this rose. Be good if I could find a nice velvet ribbon as my joining ribbon. In a blue or um, oh well I've got three months to keep my eyes open for a treasure that can join this piece in the, the more vibrant tones that to me is a purple in there next to that little it's a completely different color again which I'm looking at my pot there and I have severely underestimated all that. Yeah, well, maybe I haven't. Maybe I did take good note of the piece. Yeah, that's good. So there's my burgundy dark tone in. Gosh, I could spend just hours just sinking stitches into this piece. See, that's a different colour there again. That there, that little bit could be this. So I'm going to jump over to there and pop. Hang on. I'm just looking at the way that petal would be. If I go and stitch up, I think it would look a little odd. I think I've got to stitch down. Yeah, 
told the horses, the girl's got ahead of herself there. She's lost track of the direction of that petal. And I think it's a downward direction. So it's folding out and down. So let's just adjust that stitch to be coming down. I think that was a close call. That would have made that petal look completely wrong. The grain was not right. If I can maintain those gaps, I think I will maintain the watercolour feel for this piece. It's about having light bounce in around the artist's work here. So what I might do, how are we going for time? Gosh, time just flies too quick. Let's have a look. Put my glasses back on. Oh my goodness. There's only 15 minutes. <laughs> what I might do is when we get to the hour, I will come back and we will keep working this flower because I don't want to go away as my homework and finish it. And then you don't see how the colours and the shape of the flower comes together. I know it's probably a bit bit boring. See now, watch yourself here, girl, because that red has thinned out there. Maybe I'll zoom in a little bit too. So you can see. So it's thinned out nicely there. Yeah. Okay, that's the end of that thread. All right, well, what I might do is I will continue with this thread colour. There you go, that's what I'll do. My homework will be to finish the dark red tones that I can see here. And then I will have with me some more of the pinkier tones because I can already see I probably don't have like I don't want to get iridescent but where's the ribbons there's a couple ribbons in here that look at those I think we'll play with them next and maybe do some ribbon do I have a narrow one? Yeah, I do. Okay. All right. There's a bit of a color too that might work. All right. We will, I'll come back and do ribbons with you guys. But in the meantime, I need to decide where else I'm going to do him and him. And maybe we have a look at yellow now and I get the yellow stitched in. So I think this guy, he's an old guy. So let's suss him out. Is he going to be any good? He feels better than the last one. Yeah, it feels a lot better. It feels like a very fine crochet cotton. Maybe I double it. Otherwise, we'll be here till Christmas. So we'll do him double. And let's have a play with this edge down here. just want it to be a highlight, not a full. Yep. It's in the right tone. Look at those little flowers. Aren't they just gorgeous? Can you even see what I pointed to then? The little orange flowers there. Look at them peeking through all that.
Mind you, I don't even think irises flower in summer in Australia. I think my irises were all out months ago. This is probably not a true indication of <laughs> typical, isn't it? Maybe further down south when it's a little cooler summer, but boy, we certainly would not see them. Oh, that's beautiful. Really happy with that, guys. Glad I did two threads because it would have been too fine and not held its own against that thick stitching that is there previously. Oh yeah, love it. Just like a little kiss of sunlight on the edge of that petal. I'm gonna going to gonna shock in English. I feel like I could bring some orange into this. I'm just looking at this where my needle is, that there. To me it's not as bright. That over there is what I've just done. I was going to jump across there, but I think I need to end it off because it's a different tone. It's probably Yeah, it's probably a little bit more that that guy. Okay. All right. I'll leave it at that. What I'll do is I will have a bit of a dance around with probably that and that and that and that and get all that stitched in and then when I come back in the next video we'll have a play with these um, threads I think and then go from there and it might be a case of we put some ribbon through there and there just to get a bit of bulk down into here yeah just to get a bit of texture all right guys I'll leave it at that you guys have a great day. Have a uh, Friday for me. So you guys have a great weekend coming up. I'll see you tomorrow in a Roxy um, Honey Bear stitch. We'll be weaving. So, um, yeah, look after yourselves and see you all in the next video. Bye for now.